Well, it is good to be here, and uh, I am excited about getting to preach. I love to preach. I'm not very good at it, but I love to give it a shot every, every Sunday. And uh, so I want you to take your Bibles to John chapter 5, and I will be mindful. Yeah, let's stand together and for the reading of the Word, and, and uh, I'll give you something that, that I just think is important in my life and I think will be important in your life uh, today. John chapter 5, the Bible says, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Our Father, bless the preaching of your word. May you get glory in all that's said and done. In Jesus we pray, amen. Yes. You can be seated. I just want to, uh, I, I preached this to our church some time ago. Uh, the thought is this, we need the water troubled again. Amen. And I think in, in our day and age, we're living in a time in which many folks have, have conceded to the idea that maybe the great works of God are in the past. And possibly that the great days of revival as we have read about are in the past. But you know there's a certain season whenever God comes down. Amen. And here was a time in this story, and I'm sure you've read it before and heard it before, but this place was a place where, where just a multitude of people who were sick were gathered. They, were, they had all kinds of diseases, all kinds of infirmities, all kinds of needs. And they had gathered here uh, at a particular time. Some have, have lived here. Some have stayed here. Maybe some came from day to day. We're not sure. But I would adventure to say most of them probably just camped out here. And so it wouldn't have been a part of the town where you would have wanted to take your guest and showed them because of the, of the kinds of people that would have been here. And, uh, and so it was sick people. It was needy people. Uh, some of them probably hadn't had a bath in a while. Some probably hadn't had any kind of care given to them in a while. But they are waiting with some hope. They're waiting that hoping that whenever the water is troubled, they will be the first one in and they will be healed of whatever disease that was there. There was no warning of whenever the water would be troubled. There was no, you know, signal given. There was no countdown on the clock. There was no bell that was rung. In five minutes, the water's going to be uh, stirred or anything like that. It just happened. It just happened instantaneously. It happened without warning. Bethesda means the house of loving kindness and mercy. And can you imagine the disappointment and the discouragement that the most of these people would have experienced time after time after time whenever the water was troubled and they did not get any help? The times that they, they, they saw the water being troubled, I, I saw here where one commentator said the stirring of the water was visible. It was, it was so visible that it turned red uh, from the stirring of the water. And it made me begin to think of, of several things here about this water. And if this was in modern times, if this was in our modern day, we would come up with some solutions to help more people in this area. I, I told our church back home, I said, you know what? We don't need a new pool. They would have thought, boy, here, here would have been a better idea. Let's get a new pool. A new pool would have helped more people. They didn't need new water. The water in there was sufficient whenever God touched it. They didn't need new water. We don't need new water. 
We've got enough water and we got the right water. We, we, they didn't need a new name for it. They didn't need to change it from Bethesda to something else. They didn't need new marketing skills for the pool to get more uh, attendees there and to get the popularity and the publicity. What they did need was the touch of God. They needed the angel of God to come down and touch the water. And the Bible says this, the angel of the Lord got into the water. He just didn't touch it. He got into the water and made a difference. And our churches today, your church and our church and every other church around America today, needs to heed warning that the need of people is real. We don't need new stuff. We just need to get God in what we're doing right now. We need God to come down. We need God in the pool. We need God in our midst. We need the anointing of the Spirit of God today. We need the power of the Holy Spirit today. And what we need is, as you look at the Scripture here, and the miracle that happened to one is a miracle that needs to happen to all, is the touch of God and the healing of God. I, I think I could be fair to say this, and you would agree, we got a lot of sick folk around us today. We've got a lot of folks today that are blind and halt and lame and all kinds of diseases. And I'm not just talking physical. I'm talking about spiritual sickness and darkness that's over our world today. In this area, you wouldn't have to go far, and I wouldn't have to go far in my area to find people that are blinded to the gospel, those that are halt and withered, those that have been hurt in life and that are struggling in life. And so I wrote down some things that I gave to our church, I'll give to you. Number one, we need God's touch. The reason why we need God's touch is because it's been a long time. It's been a long season since we've seen God come down. Your pastor, as well as I, maybe many of you have read uh, stories of revival. We've read the books of revival whenever great revivals would happen and the power of God would come down and it'd be weeks and weeks and weeks and months and sometimes years that the Holy Ghost power would be so powerful that souls would be getting saved and lives would be getting right. It's been a long time since we've seen that in America. It's been a long time since we've seen that in our churches across America today. I've read and I've, I, I got saved. Actually, I got under conviction. Let me put it that way. There was a camp years ago, an old Southern Baptist camp uh, called Camp Zion in Myrtle, Mississippi. And I was down there and Percy Ray was a great preacher and had a burden on his heart for revival and started Camp Zion in order to draw America back to God. And I went there and the first time I went there, I got under conviction about needing to be saved. And I got his book, at Estes Perkle wrote about him, and I read it, and I read it, and I read it, and it reminded me that there were times of revival, and he experienced those times whenever he would go and preach, and multitudes of people would be saved, and a meeting would last a week, and two weeks, and three weeks, and four weeks, and, and the power of God would come and move. Might I say it's been a long season since we've seen that kind of movement of revival in America. It's probably been a long time since we've seen that kind of movement out here where you live, where I live, and in other places. We need God's touch because it's been a long time since the last stirring by the Holy Ghost of God. He said there was gathered all these people, he said, but at a certain season. It's just been a long season, ladies and gentlemen, since we've seen the power of revival since we've seen the pouring out of God's Spirit. And I'm not talking about some of the things that we see today in some of the modern churches. I'm talking about something that transforms the lives of people. Whenever these people went to the pool and they got healed, they didn't need any other additional help. They got healed. They got all that they needed whenever they got to the pool and the angel of the Lord was down there. I'll tell you another reason why we need God's touch is because of the great multitude that's in need. I look around here in, in our area and I look at your area and there's no difference. Preacher, I've been, I've been out here a few days and the people out here are no different than the people are in the Midwest. They're lost. They're dying without hope in this world. There are people that are good people. They're hardworking people, but they have no 
God in their heart. They don't have Christ in their heart. Ephesians tells us that they're without Christ and without God and without hope in this world. And that's why we need a stirring of God is because people are dying without Christ today. They're dying without any assurance of heaven. We need the angel of the Lord to come down today, the Holy Ghost of God to move, the Spirit of the Lord to come today because of the emptiness that's around us today. And we have no ability to fill that emptiness on our own. We could have got in these waters or somebody could have got in these waters of Bethesda and stirred them themselves. And guess what? Nothing would have happened. It, this is not a man-made thing that happened. This was something supernatural. This was something of God. Man could only, he could have stirred the waters, but he couldn't have healed anybody. And we've got a lot of churches today in our area that are trying to stir waters, but they are not having any power. We have crowds, but we don't have converts. And we're interested in converts, amen? And a good crowd can make some converts, but we have to have more than a crowd. We want converts. And so what we have today is men trying to stir the waters, men trying to make the waters muddy and stirred and troubled so that people can get in. And the Bible says they heal the, the, the children of my people slightly by saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. That's why we need God to come down today. Number two, we, only God can trouble the waters. I can't do it. You can't do it. The church can't do it on its own. We need God. God made it in such a way that we depend completely upon him. And as I said, these men and women that would be gathered around this pool their expectation was not in what the physicians would say and everything, but they were looking at the troubling of the water. They were depending upon that supernatural work of God. They were looking at that power from God to come down and stir that water. And whoever got in there first was instantly healed of any disease that they had. I thought about God in the water. In Genesis, God created the water. Amen. Amen. He sure did. I read about Noah and God flooded the world with water. I thought about Moses and how God parted the waters for Moses. And I thought about, I thought about Moses there in the desert and, and the people were crying to him for something to drink and he smote the rock or in, uh, uh, the rock there and waters gushed out. Thought about Joshua. Joshua going to the taking the children of Israel over into the, land, into the promised land and there was a Jordan River out of its banks and, and as the priest walked in, the power of God moved the waters back. I thought about Elijah who prayed that it wouldn't rain and it didn't rain and then he prayed again that it might rain and it did rain. I thought about Elisha who healed the bitter waters. I thought about how God just worked in the waters all through the biblical record that we have. And in here was a supernatural, whenever I was taking Bible courses, uh, the, the guy that, that I was listening to, Mr. Brooks, he was doing the Bible teaching and, and, and he was teaching through the gospel of John and he said this was some superstition they had. And as soon as he said that, I just turned it off and I, I answered his question and I said, this wasn't a superstition. This was a very special time for God to do something. It was a unique time. And I'm going to tell you today, we need that unique time of God again in our lives. We get so comfortable doing these things over and over and over and over in our power and in our energy. The Bible says they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And so they, we need this because the waters, God's the only one that can trouble the waters. God's the only one who can save a soul. Amen. I can't save anybody. You can't save anybody. The church can't save anybody. Baptism can't save anybody. Only God can save. We need the stirring of God because God's the only one who can heal the hearts of people. There are hearts all around here that are just broken hearted. In the story, we didn't read it, but there was other people there, but there was a man there that had an infirmity for 38 years. Had been laying there without any expectation of getting into that pool for 38 years, but he still laid there. 
He said, about every time the waters get stirred and I get ready to go, somebody gets in there before me. And he said, I just can't make it. And all around your community here are people who are, who are in need of help for 38 years and some of them longer than that that are going through infirmities and discouragements and disheartenedness. And they need the stirring of God. They need it here so that they can come and get help. The Bible says only God can trouble the waters. It said here in verse number four, for an angel went down at a certain season. We don't know that certain season. We don't know exactly the day when it happened. We don't know when it happened, but we know that when it happened, something happened. And it was a good thing that happened. And I know you're aware of this because of your preacher, but there are people that are sick all around you today in sin, drunkenness, drugs, immoral, the, the brokenness of the home, children that are living in brokenness today, wives that are living in brokenness today, men that are living in brokenness today. And they're needing something. They're needing a troubled waters so that they can come and get help. They need a touch of God in the church today so they can come and get help. What an exciting time it was around the pool when the angel came down and something happened. What an exciting time it was for that one. But I'm going to tell you what, just for that one only in this story, because there was a multitude there that didn't get any help. We need God's touch because he's the only one that can trouble the waters. The last thought this morning, really to emphasize this is this. We need to experience this touch as individuals and as a church. We're living in a time, ladies and gentlemen, in which, in which man is trying to fabricate spiritual results. We're trying to fabricate things that we call spiritual results awakenings and spiritual movements. Every once in a while I'll get a, a magazine or I'll get some kind of a, 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 a war, a, an alert or a, some kind of a message that says great revivals happening in America. And I'm looking around thinking I don't see it. I don't see it. Now I think there's a lot of enthusiasm that happens around America, but I don't think it's Bible revival. I don't think it's some of the things that we record in the script or that's recorded in the scripture it's being biblical moving of God. I like this verse here. The Bible says in verse number four, whosoever, whosoever. I don't know how many people are sitting in here today, but let me say this. Maybe somebody sitting here today would be whosoever and say, you know what? I want God to stir me. I want God to stir my heart. I, want, I, I know God lives in us by the power of the Holy Spirit when we get saved. Amen. We all know that. The minute you get saved, Christ moves into you in the person of the Holy Spirit. We know that, right? <clears throat> but let me say this. Sometimes in our lives, we need a touch of God, a fresh touch, a new touch. We don't need a new spirit we just need the Holy Spirit of God to get a hold of us. And today you can experience that in your life. <clears throat> I think sometimes in my personal Christian life, in my walk with God, I'm not talking about the church, I'm just talking about in my personal walk with God, I can get so comfortable doing the th same things, read my Bible, get in the, get in the habit let's say, of reading our Bible. We maybe even get in the habit of praying. We get in the habit of, of church. And long before we even know it, we've got in such a habit that we've missed the stirring of God in our hearts. And there are times whenever we, we have revival meetings or we have special times in the church, certain seasons of the church when we're sitting here, we come Sunday after Sunday, but one Sunday's different and all of a sudden that certain season comes and God stirs our hearts. God moves on us in an unusual way 
and he pricks us and he convicts us and he gets into our lives and it stirs us about him. Maybe today that'd be you. Maybe today you're sitting here and you say, you know, I read my Bible and I do my prayer time or devotion time and, you know, I go to church and this, but it's been a long time since I felt that, that thrill of God in my life. It's been a while since I've felt that moving of that stirring, that troubling of those waters in my life. And I think that happens in the Christian life. I think there's times whenever a church, a good church, your church, my church, any other church around here, it don't really matter. I think there's times whenever a church gets so busy doing the things that we're doing that we just get comfortable and all of a sudden we realize that we've not had a touch of God. And we need that. And at a certain season of prayer and, and, and a certain season of seeking the Lord and a certain season of, of, of maybe fasting and a certain season of, 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 of crying out to God, at that certain season, God just unknown to us, unknown that it's going to happen, comes down like he did in the book of Acts. They were in the upper room praying. They had no idea on Pentecost that this great movement was going to happen. They were there preparing their hearts and seeking the Lord. And on the day of Pentecost, on the, day of Pentecost the Bible says that they, they heard something and they saw something and they experienced something. And it moved them in such a way that the others took note of it. And I believe today we need to experience the troubling whosoever. You say, well, preacher, who, who does that mean? Well, I think it just means what it means, whosoever. I believe that troubling of those waters, that stirring of your spirit today could be to anybody sitting in this room. Anybody sitting in this room could experience a moving of God in their heart today. To, to bring us to holiness, to bring us to a close walk with God, to bring us to fellowship with him like we've never had before. I believe it could be to whosoever. I believe it could be to anybody. But I like this. The Bible says, and whatever, whatsoever disease they had was made whole. Aren't you glad today that God didn't say, well, now I can only help the blind. This, this troubling of the water is only good for, for a certain group for certain problems. Aren't you glad today that when God gets in the midst of all the troubles that we face and all the problems that we face and all the difficulties that we face, everything that we go through in life, the answer is in Jesus Christ. The answer is not in me. The answer is not in you. But the answer is in him of whatsoever disease they have. Listen, there's not a sinner out here around you that God can't save. There's not a problem that God can't fix. There's not a home that God can't restore. There's not a life that God can't redeem. Whatsoever disease they had, God said they were healed of it. Here was a blind man. Oh, how hard it must have been for a blind man to ever see. But if he got to the waters, he could see. How hard it would have been for a lame man to have been made whole but if he had got to the waters the issue of blood how hard that would have been to have been healed but if they would have got to the waters whatsoever disease they had God was able to make that whole boy you read through the you read through the gospels and boy there were some hard cases I think any of them were hard for me all of them were hard for me here comes a blind man well, I don't know how to heal a blind man. Do you? I don't. I don't think anybody does. Here comes a guy lame. Here comes a guy with a, 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 a deaf and dumb spirit. Here comes a guy demon possessed. And the, the answer was in Christ. The answer was not in man's ability. The answer was in Christ. And the Spirit of God that was upon him, uh, upon him and anointed him for this work is the same Spirit of God that is upon us that has anointed us for this work. And we need his Spirit. So this week while you're out and about, you're going to run into people who's going to need some troubled waters. And if you're that troubled water, they can get help by being around you and by being around me. The Bible said uh, this, this uh, fellow that Jesus came into, 
uh, here, this man that had this infirmity, he said, uh, he said, uh, how come you're not healed? You've been here a long time. How come you're not healed? I always like getting into the story, don't you? I, I think, I'm thinking about this poor lame guy that's laying there, and here comes Jesus by, and the disciples, you know, and, and, and the smell, and the, just, the, man, just the bad condition it had been in. Jesus said, uh, pal, how come you ain't healed? And he said, well, every time the waters are troubled, somebody gets there before I do. And he said, I, I've never been able to get there. And I don't know if the guy had any expectations or not, but he, he sure heard some good news. He said, uh, the Lord said to him, he said, well, just take up your bed and walk. He said, I'll save you the troubles of the waters, and the waters will come to you. Amen. Amen. He said, I'll just save you the trouble of getting to the water, and I'll just bring the waters to you. Just take up your bed and walk. An old fella, he didn't say, well, that's not the rules. <laughs> you know, he didn't say any of that. He said, that's not protocol. That's not how they all learn it today. I think I read there. He just did what Jesus said. He just got up. Now listen, if you haven't walked in 38 years, today you're going to need a lot of therapy. Learn how to get strength in your legs and all of that. But not here. Whenever Jesus told him to take up his bed and walk, man, you can be laying there for 38 years, you're going to be weak. And God gave him everything that he needed to do what he said to do. I'm going to tell you what, folks. I don't have to live here to know, but I can tell you this. God's given us everything that we need to, to go out here and heal every sin, sick sinner that there is. Now, if you're kind of like me, <clears throat> Smells don't set well with me. If, if you're kind of like me, uh, some smells turn my stomach. Anybody, anybody like that? Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Two of us. All right. So sometimes, I, I'm sure your pastor, probably some of you have been out knocking doors. One time we was knocking doors, preacher, and the, this guy had like 500 cats. I'm telling you a lot, there was like a, I mean, it was unbelievable cats. And he was in a wheelchair, and so you know the nastiness of cats. And, and I'm telling you what, before we ever got to the door, this aroma was coming out of his house. And I'm thinking like, I really hope this guy isn't home. <laughs> Amen? Can I get a witness there? And I'm telling you, we, I, I made it up there, and I knocked on his door, and I'm just I, and I know we're supposed to be real spiritual, but I'm, I'm just thinking, oh, Lord, help us. So I'm knocking. Well, here he comes, and he opens that door. And I'm telling you, it's like the Lord got behind the house and blowed the wind through the house. And, oh, man, I'm telling you, I was like, to, I'm gagging. I'm thinking, why didn't the other guy come to this house? Amen. <laughs> Well, I've been to places, I'm sure you all have, that's not been the most desirable, but they've been the most needful. And a lot of times, I'm so, so carnal, I think, well, there ain't no way that guy gets saved. There ain't no way God could help that person. But the Bible says, whosoever and whatsoever was made whole. Whosoever and whatsoever was made whole. Well, no problem for him. And I'm going to tell you today, all across this county, all across this city, this state, are people like Bethesda. They're just all over. And they need somebody to carry them the message of hope. 
They need somebody to carry them the message of hope. I'm not talking what this world's offering them. I'm talking real hope. You have it if you're saved today. Your church has it. I know that because I know your preacher. And we need to carry that message of hope to those sin sick sinners. Now, let me quickly say this. Bethesda was filled with sick people. Wasn't whole people here. They need to be here. I think I read something in the Bible that Jesus said something like this. I came not to call the righteous to repentance, but I came to, to seek and to save the sinner. It's not the whole that need the physician, but them that are sick. Our gospel is for the sick. Our message is for the sick today. For whosoever and whatsoever. Say, boy, preacher, you know, we bring that group in. We, we, we get that guy to come to church and don't tell him what's liable to happen. You're right, don't tell him. He's liable to get saved. He's liable to get changed. He's liable to be, instead of a Saul of Tarsus, a Paul the preacher. He's liable to be somebody great for God. Sick. Jesus walking through there. I can see Peter and James and John and the others walking through there. Why didn't we go around this place? Why didn't we go out the edge? I'll tell you why. Because Jesus likes being in the midst of needy people. I must needs go through Samaria. So they're stepping through and, you know, them, them apostles, they were probably thinking, man, if we're around these sick people, we're going to get sick. Amen? Yeah. But Jesus had a mission, and that was to bring the water to a man that couldn't get to it. By the way, that's what you and I are to do. We're to bring the message to those that won't come get it themselves who can't come get it. Now, today you may not be saved, and the greatest need you have in your heart is Jesus Christ. You're a sin-sick sinner today, and you need Christ in your heart. And if you'll come to the water, you'll find that Christ will heal you of sin. Oh, it'll be a wonderful thing, won't it? Be an exciting time in your life. Maybe as a Christian today, you say, boy, it's been a while since the water's been troubled in my heart. It's been a while since my spirit has been stirred about God. I come to church, I read my Bible, I go through the routine, but it's been a while since I've really experienced the troubling of God in my heart, the stirring of God, and I need that today. I believe our church needs it. I believe every church needs it. And I believe whenever we experience it, we'll have no problem getting that crowd out yonder to come in here where the water is. See, they'll come where there's healing. They'll, they'll come where there's help. They're drawn to it. They're just drawn to it. And God wants to stir us today as a church. God wants to get in the midst of us as a church like we've never been before and experience his power in our life. Today we need that. I need that. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I could stand here and tell you, man, I'm the preacher, and I'm telling you, I got this thing down to a science of how to stay spiritual. No, I need to stir into God all the time because I just get so far away from him, so cold and so still that I need God to stir me, and you need it today in your life. Our Father, we pray today for the blessing of God. We thank you for the, the story here of the stirring of the waters, the troubling of the waters at a certain season. And God, it's been a long season. Lord, we need stirring today. We need, the, we need that season to come to an end and God to experience something in our lives, in our hearts today. That maybe we know we're saved and on our way to heaven. But boy, it's been a while since we've really experienced the power of God and the stirring of God. There might be a sinner here that's sick and needs saved and needs help. Father, today would you draw that man, that woman to Christ. Lord, may they experience the healing hand of God today in their life. May they experience the touch of the Lord. 
in a great way. And we'll do our best to praise you for what you do. In Christ's name, let's stand together.